gotten a lot of questions about the Shingrix vaccine, um, and I wanted to talk about what Shingrix actually is, how it stacks up against Zostavax, some common side effects, and basically when can you get it, how much is it going to cost, and will my insurance cover it. So the, the Shingrix vaccine is a vaccine for shingles, which is a condition that is pretty prevalent in the United States. The chances of getting shingles grow as you get older. Um, about 99% of people over the age of 40 are candidates for getting shingles. So if you've had uh, chicken pox or you've been exposed to the chicken pox virus, that virus lives inside your nerves and can become reactivated as you, uh, as you get older and as there's some stress or some other triggering factor that can cause, uh, it basically starts as a uh, tingling and some pain and then uh, a rash and that can lead to long lasting uh, nerve damage. The nerve damage can go away in some cases, but uh, in some cases it keeps going and it's known as uh, post-hereptic neuropathy or PNH and um, people can live with this for a long time and shingles is usually thought of as something that occurs across your trunk or in your body but it can even occur in your face and affect one of your eyes so it won't, wouldn't affect both but it could affect one of your eyes causing a loss of vision um, blindness in the eye um, so it's a very it's a very scary thing uh, one million people a year get it uh, one in three uh, will get it in their lifetime. So it's really exciting that there's a new vaccine that that will address the shingles problem. So in the past, well, right now we have Zostavax, and Shingrix is coming on in it, and, and it uh, looks like it's more promising. So Shingrix is a two-shot sh series. You get the second shot two to six months after the first shot, and it has... Two different components in the vaccine. One is the um, the the antigen that is what the body is going to kind of fight against, and you're going to develop immunity to. And there's another thing called an adjuvant, which is to ramp up the immunity. So as you know, as you get older, the immunity wanes. Um, so this vaccine actually has something to kind of ramp up the immune response to compensate for the fact that as people get older, the your immune responses are lower. So it's extremely exciting. Um, so the first thing is, um, the most exciting aspect, of course, is well, how effective is it? If you look at, you know, a flu shot or something, uh, it's a good, probably a good flu shot if it's halfway effective. Um, the Zosavax shot, if you were between the ages and 60 and, of 60 and 69, you had a 64% uh, reduction in chances of getting shingles. If you were between the ages of 70 and 79, it was 41%. And the people that need it most, it was only 18%, and that's people that are older than 80. Because the cases, as patients age, the cases are, are worse. So, well, how does Shingrix kind of stack up um, in that regard? So across all of the age groups, it is greater than 90% effective. And Zosavax was shown that after about five years, the, the uh, effectiveness of the shot would go down. Shingrix has been studied for four years, and that was not seen at all. So of course, with a more effective vaccine, you're going to see a slightly different, or actually vastly different, side effects. If you take the Shingrix vaccine, one of that components is designed to ramp up your immune response. And with a ramped up immune response, you'll see some side effects. So if you look at um, the local side effects first, when you got the injection in the arm, um, about 88% of people um, complained of pain at that injection site um, within a week afterwards. Um, as far as swelling, and redness, it was about the same as Zostavax. It was about 30%. But the worst side effects are kind of that systemic reaction, the reaction, uh, it's almost like somebody's, you're getting the flu. So that wasn't so bad with Zostavax. Um, but with Shingrix, it's a lot worse. So 
Uh, over 50% of people experience muscle pain. Over 50% experienced um, tiredness. Um, almost a third experienced um, shivering and a low-grade fever. So that's way different than Zosivax. Zosivax didn't really do much of that at all. So Shingrix is a lot worse in that regard. And, you know, if you think about it, it kind of makes sense. Like I said, that adjuvant is designed to ramp up the immune response. So with a ramped up immune response, you're going to feel like you're getting a little sick. So I, I hope that that does not deter people from getting the shot. Um, shingles is terrible. Um, the pain after getting shingles can be extremely bad. Um, you know, so bad that people don't want to go on. I mean, it can be really bad. So I think it's probably worth it. We'll see when the shot comes out um, how the how the public reacts to the um, to the side effects. But I think uh, most people will consider it um, tolerable, considering the huge advantage that they get. It kind of stinks that they have to get they have to experience it twice. So it's not like you get the shot. And then the second time you didn't, you're not going to experience the side effects. Um, actually, you'll probably experience them twice. So in October, a council within the CDC called ACIP, or I guess maybe ACIP, it's a council of doctors, and they looked over the data around um, around Shingrix. So Shingrix was approved for patients over the age of 50 by the FDA, but the CDC has not made a determination yet. So the council um, called ACIP, they basically decide kind of whether they want to recommend it to the director of the CDC and the secretary of health and human services. So they decided to recommend Shingrix uh, for patients over the age of 50. They decided to, uh, to recommend it if you've already gotten the Zosivac shot in the past and actually uh, to recommend it over Zostavax. And that was a decision that was actually controversial for some of the members on the council because they thought it was too early to make that determination. Um, but, they, but most of the members felt it was uh, so promising as far as how effective it is that um, Shingrits should be given this added bonus of being recommended over Zostavax. So why isn't it in the market? Why can't you go to the pharmacy and get it yet? So basically, um, there is a few hurdles that have to go through. First of all, the CDC director has to put a stamp of approval on it, and so does the Secretary of Health and Human Services. Uh, once that happens, um, GlaxoSmithKline, who makes the drug, will actually release that into the market, and it'll take a little while for pharmacies to be able to give it to you without a prescription. So once it's released, if your doctor writes a prescription, a pharmacist will be able to give it to you um, in most states. If they have the prescription in their hand, they can say, okay, I can give you this drug. Uh, it would fit within the, within the current protocol. But um, as far as if your plan's going to recover it, because it's quite expensive, if you, if you were to pay out of pocket, it would be between three to four hundred dollars. So... Um, you know, having some coverage would really help. And it looks like a lot of the Part D plans are actually already covering it even before the launch. Um, some of the plans may not have done it yet because I don't know about all the plans. I do know that some of them have already approved it. And you can actually go and ask the pharmacy and see, you know, would it be approved even though you don't have it? And they should be able to tell, uh, run a claim and see if it is going to be covered or if the plan has made a determination so you can kind of have that information and plan for however much money you're going to have to uh, have to pay for it so I want to thank you guys for watching um, I I appreciate it please like and please subscribe it would really help me out a lot thanks